Hi, I'm Joni, creator and road guide here at The Galavan. Before we get to the video, I'd like to invite nomadic women, whether you're full-time, part-time, or still dreaming, to join in on my new Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, organized through the Gal Adventurers group on Facebook. You can find the link in the description below. The Happy Hour is a place for women to build community, ask questions, share experiences, and dive into the topic of the day. I do hope you'll join us. Now on to the video. One of my favorite things about nomad life is meeting other nomads and touring their vans. I love being able to share these vans with you to give you inspiration for what you might want in your van. For me, every van has at least some interesting idea that I haven't seen before, and this van in particular has lots of creative solutions. In this week's video, we get to tour an incredible self-built transit that Bria built with no experience. Her van features a raised convertible dinette bed area, a cassette toilet, a collapsible indoor shower, a galley kitchen with beautiful and creative touches throughout. You can find me at Bria Keeps Adventuring on Instagram. And this is my 2015 Ford Transit uh, 130 wheelbase and medium roof. I bought it back in February of 2019 and spent about a year and a half entirely building it out myself. So outside, um, I've got a little drop down table here for just outdoor coffee and everything like that. I engraved a little. Um, Keep adventuring in it to actually match my tattoo here. So I just sit out here, have coffee, sometimes put my laptop out here to work, or just enjoy being outside with the outside table. And then I've also got um, plenty of space for all my dog's toys out here, easy access to be able to throw the ball, everything like that. Uh, and then on the entryway here too, I also have his water bowl and food bowl here. Um, and then just my trash, some additional storage under the footstep here. So this little ammo box I use for doggy bags. So sometimes when I'm out hiking, I'm trying to be responsible, pick up my dog's waste, but there's not always somewhere to throw it away and I don't want it to stink up my van. So I put it in this little airtight box and so it doesn't smell and then I can just throw it away when I have the chance to. So come on inside, I'll show you the inside of the van here. So when you first step in, we're in the kitchen area. I added a um, up counter space here for just some additional counter space. This is where I tend to do most of my cooking here. I have um, just a one burner butane stove that I use to do my cooking and so I like to set that here because it's in close range to the exhaust fan as well as my sliding door has a little vent window that I can open to get some good airflow to get the steam and smells and everything when I'm cooking. And then under here I've got my fridge. I've got a Dometic um, top loading electric cooler here and I've got some additional locks just for moving and everything like that so it's just just top loading here no freezer or anything like that but it's got enough space for you know food vegetables drinks everything like that in there and it runs off the electric system then some drawers here. I also keep all my drawers and everything closed with a magnetic baby lock here just um, to keep everything tight when I'm driving but it's also something I can turn off when I'm not doing which is a little flick of the switch there so that way I'm able to use it and not have to use the magnet every single time there. So I've got kind of like pots and pans, silverware, this is where I keep my butane stove and then um, over here in this drawer is actually kind of my bathroom cabinet. So I've got a slide out um, just little cassette toilet here, um, just for going number one there, um, but that's convenient there. And then there's also a small shelf up here where I keep kind of like my shower stuff, face wipes, um, hair things, stuff like that. So that's kind of my bathroom cabinet there. And then I've got some spice rock. I've got 
um, some mountains that I made here to kind of represent the mountains from where I lived in Colorado there. Um, and so in here is just additional kind of food storage, plates, um, collapsible containers, things like that. And then I've also got a um, little coffee shelf over here and a candle randomly. <laughs> So this is the front area of my van. Um, one thing I'm super happy that I added is this upper storage shelf here. It may not look like it, but it holds a lot. So this is actually where I keep all of my bedding up here. I've got um, like a cover, mattress cover for a little extra padding on the cushions. I've got my comforter. I've got my sheets behind it, pillows up here. I also have just a bunch of random stuff, little extra jackets and fanny packs and lint roller which is helpful with a dog and just a bunch of extra stuff stored back behind that as well um and this was something that was cool it came with a little kit i actually just ordered from a company and i think it's called vancillary and it came with a little bracket to attach it and just a piece of paper to fold out and i was able to cut the wood myself and stain it to whatever color i wanted and add it in but it's just added a ton of extra storage space for me up here um, and then I've got my blackout curtain here that I can use to close off the cab area to make it feel separate um, from the driving part of the car. And then um, my passenger seat is actually on a swivel. Um, I do have to move my dog's food dish here in order to swivel it around, but it's really nice. It just creates another seating option, really opens the van up. So if I ever have a couple people in here, it's just nice to spread out and not all be on top of each other. And it's, you know, just an alternate place to sit, work, do some stuff like that, as well as just some additional storage on the back here. I like to do crossword puzzles and just store some extra bags for campfires and my dog's long leash and everything like that. Um, and then the cab area is pretty traditional to a normal front of a car area. I've got my dog Gulliver here. He rides in the passenger seat. Uh, I was with a little harness and a seatbelt attached into the seatbelt buckle there. One thing I added after um, almost a year of living in the van is I decided I needed an additional heat source. So I installed um, just a Chinese diesel heater into my van here. And with the Ford Transit, there's actually a pretty big cavity underneath the passenger seat. So I was able to uh, remove the passenger seat and swivel and put that under there. And so the heat just blows out here. Um, normally I move this stuff, but it's summer, so I don't mm -hmm. have heat going right now. And then I just have a um, 10 liter tank over here behind my uh, driver's seat. And so that I usually actually fill just with diesel from the gas station, but I have a tank in the back of my van that I fill up there and then I use that to fill that up. So this is my sink area. Um, I have the kind of drop-in cutting board here that I just cut out when cutting the sink hole here. I have a water pump switch on the side here that I just turn on. I have running water. Um, I do have hot water. I have a very small um, one and a half gallon um, electric water heater just under the bench here. So I'm able to have some hot water for dishes or anything like that. Um, I went with a fairly deep sink because don't always wash my dishes after each meal. So that way I can store them or throw anything else I need in to throw in there while I'm driving and anything like that. Um, it just drains down underneath here. Um, again, baby latches. And then I have just like a removable water storage system. So I have a seven gallon fresh water tank and six gallon gray water tank since I tend to you know cook and drink some of the water so it never ends up being quite as much going down the drain as it's coming out of the faucet there. And those are just removable which is nice because I can fill them up at kind of any spigot that can fit it. The um, fresh water tank actually even fits in one of those like water machines outside of a grocery store so that's nice especially in winter sometimes those outdoor water faucets aren't open always so it's nice to have that option too and then I've just got some additional storage um, here, just soap, garbage bags, things like that. And then I've even got, even along the sides of the sink here, there's a couple, there's some hooks here for um, just like Nalgene water bottles and um, a fake little drawer here that just stores some other random stuff, nail polish, things like mm -hmm. that. And then my dish drying pad just kind of fits right between the sink and the drawer there because you gotta use every inch of space that you can in a van like this. So this is my closet. I originally built it because I was gonna have my skis stored in here. And then I decided having my clothes in here was a much better use of this space. I really like that I can just like open it and reach things and I don't need to be like digging under a bench or anything like that to access my clothes. So it just locks with this little lock here. I've got a nice hook for my towel, hat, 
um, pack towel, the Lux, I really like. It makes it feel like I'm not just camping all the time. It's like a real towel, but still packs down pretty small. And I've got just like toiletries and things like that. And then all my clothes kind of falling out here on these shelves right here. And then at the bottom, um, can't really see it, but there is a little bag down there and just all my dirty laundry down on the bottom, which I need to go do laundry today. <laughs> So I decided to raise this back platform up a little bit since when I'm back here, I'm usually either sitting or sleeping. So I didn't really need the full height. And this actually gave me a lot of extra storage. And the first about a foot of it right here is accessed from the front here. And this is shoes. <laughs> so I just kind of cram all my shoes in there. So this is just a little latch. It just turns and opens that way. I see it like there, it just turns and opens. It was just kind of an easier, just alternate way to access that space down here. And then it also, when I push, it just automatically closes on its own. And then this is my back area. It is both the living room, dining room, bedroom, all of the above. So um, when I actually originally built it, I just had the two benches and it was fully open in the middle. And then I realized I needed some more storage space. So I added in this middle piece afterwards. Um, but it's got the two benches you can fit four or five people back here and then i have a swivel table it's on the lagoon swivel mount that you see in a lot of vans there and so this is nice just to be able to work or eat or anything like that and then i just tend to drop it down so it touches the floor and it rests on the benches when i drive so that way it's not wiggling all over the place so this bench um has mainly my electrical system in it um, that takes up about the first three quarters of it and then the back corner is just an additional pretty deep storage space so I keep um, a lot of my tools in there um, just in case I need to fix anything I've definitely had to fix some things on the road I've had like heater you know need to fix that uh, the water pump I had to switch out I had an issue with my electrical system so I love having all my tools to be able to do anything I actually was able to add the additional storage space just on the road using the hand tools I had here so it's nice to just have those with me so I keep those in that bench so this is my electrical system I have two 100 amp hour lithium batteries um, and then a 2000 watt inverter here and then this box is actually both um, my solar charge controller um, and my battery to battery charger. So this connects to, I have 300 watts of solar up on the roof of the van. And then it also helps me to charge my batteries off the alternator while I'm driving. Um, but it also has a smart cutoff switch so I can never accidentally drain my van batteries. Um, if it's pulling and those batteries drop below a certain level, it'll automatically cut off, but it actually works the other way that if my house batteries get filled all the way, they're at hundred percent and I'm still getting solar input, it'll also trickle charge the car battery just to help give it a little bit of extra charge there. Then I've just got fuses for all my lights and water pump, electric, everything like that. Um, my inverter is how I have my, um, you know, kind of normal household plugs. And with that, I didn't want to like hardwire them. So this inverter actually has three little plugs on the side. So I just plugged in power strips here to be able to do that. <clears throat> so super easy. So I've got one here to use in the back. I've got one up in my kitchen there. And then the third one is actually um, how I do my water heater. There's a power cord that runs over the other side of the van over there. And that's how the water heater goes on. So this is kind of my control panel of the van here. I've got my battery monitor here. This is how I turn my inverter on and off with this little switch here, just so that I'm not drawing power from my batteries when I don't need them. Um, I've got a little just like 12 volt here. It's got USB plug um, and then my um, cell phone booster here. I initially didn't start out with one of these, but after trying to work on the road, um, it was difficult sometimes to find service in areas. So I definitely added one of these. Um, and then I've got just my back lights here actually on a dimmer since this is kind of my bed area. It's nice to be able to um, turn those down low at night there. Um, and all of my electrical, I pretty much learned off of YouTube, Facebook, um, Far Out Ride was very helpful with their diagrams. I think I actually purchased one of the diagrams to be able to put um, my own information and like my power consumption needs and everything in there to help me design the power system to meet my personal needs. And it's definitely a lot of learning, but 
you know, it's definitely something I also like, feel proud about having been able to do it all by myself. So that was pretty cool to do that. So I have a fan over here. It just helps um, with ventilation and moving air throughout the van. This one's really cool because it can go to like literally any angle you want it to. Um, it's really nice at night sometimes just to be able to like point it if it's really hot, point it at me while I'm sleeping. Um, it helps just really with cross ventilation there because my vent and my opening window are both a little bit more forward in the van so it just keeps that air moving. It's got three different settings on it. And I've got my smoke detector for safety here. Um, I do have to take it out sometimes when I'm cooking because it's a very small space so it's very sensitive. Um, but yeah, I have that and my carbon monoxide detector on the other wall are both good for safety. <laughs> So I added this extra storage afterwards, um, just out in the desert cutting wood. And I actually um, just cut little holes in the brackets here. And so this is actually completely removable if I did need to have the full length of my van again, if I wanted to put like a paddle board or something in here and needed that full length, this just slides back out. And then I can just take out the stuff in the middle and I can have that full open walkway again if I need to. So I've just got some extra storage in here. I've got um, a little bug net that just Velcros to my side sliding door. Um, just some additional, you know, backup food, things like that. Um, slippers, um, blanket, everything like that. Stuff that I don't use a ton, um, but I'm still able to access easily if I need to. And then probably the most important thing I keep back here is my option to have a shower in my van if I need to. I do have a Planet Fitness membership, so I use that when I can, but I do store in here. Um, in this little box here, I've got um, a shower, shower attachment that just attaches to my sink there. So it just, I unscrew the faucet on the sink and screw in this shower head here. And then I've also got um, a shower curtain here in this little storage bag. And this actually just, um, I can attach to the little hooks I have on my ceiling there, or I usually actually set up a square out of PVC pipes here and attach the shower curtain to that. Um, and then that way it just stays a little bit more. For the base of my shower, I actually just use a collapsible dog pool. Um, I was able to find a rectangular one that fits perfectly between my sink and my other cabinet on the floor there. Um, and it just collects all the water when I shower. I do pretty quick showers, so there's not a ton of water. Um, and then I'm able to actually just lift it up and dump it down my sink into my gray water tank. So these are actually hooks. I think they're, um, I got them from a craft store. They're used for hanging photos, but the thing I like about them is they have enough pressure to stay in the up position and then I can just pull them down if I need to, but they stay up there even through bumpy roads and stuff. They don't tend to drop back down and it just gives me that extra centimeter of space on the ceiling there. The other nice thing about having the longer shower attachment like this is I'm able to use it outdoors if I want to. So I can shower outdoors. I can hose off the dog if he's super sandy from the beach like he was yesterday um, or just rinse off anything I need to outdoors. This is how I actually turn on my hot water heater on and off. It's actually so it's not even really built in there. It's plugged into like a smart outlet and so I can just turn it on or off. That way I don't need to actually be like reaching down to the outlet and I didn't have to hardwire anything. I just ran an extension cord from the inverter and then plugged the smart outlet into the extension cord and then the hot water heater into the smart outlet. And that way I didn't have to worry about like hardwiring a switch for that or anything. So I can just turn it on and off from right here. So it's not pulling energy and heating water when I don't want it to be. <laughs> so when I'm ready to go to sleep at night, I turn the sitting area into bed mode. So I basically just lift the tabletop off here and then remove the table leg, just put it on the ground. Usually with all the pillows and everything like that goes down as well. And then this table actually just sits on these little runners here along the side of the benches. So I just kind of tuck it in there. On both sides there. And then these back cushions come down to fill in the gap in the middle there. So the storage under this bench, um, I've got my hot water heater and then additional storage and I can access it from this side here by just lifting up here. 
Um, but typically I tend to access it from the back of the van more often because it's a lot of longer items. So we can go around to the back and I can show you how I get to all that stuff that way. So the back of my van uh, has a couple things. I've got a backup camera here, which is really nice just with driving a larger vehicle um, to be able to see everything a little bit better. And then I actually bought the van used. So it came with a tow package on it, which I've never used to tow anything, but it's always nice to have that option just in case. When I originally uh, built out my van, I didn't really have anything in the back here at all. Um, and then I added two cute little like decorative bookcases and then realized that this is actually just potential for more storage area. So I added some hooks so I could easily access my backpacks for like hiking or going into coffee shops. I've got my extra tough boots here. Um, I've got some bear spray if I'm in those states where I need that or anything like that. Um, extra water container here. So this is an additional six gallons of water here. Um, unfortunately, it's not the same shape as my one under my sink. So you do have to do a transfer, but it's just nice to have that option to have some extra water there in case I need it. So that way I'm able to have 13 gallons of fresh water at a time, which usually lasts me well over a week without having to refill. And then this is actually how I refill my diesel for my diesel heater. Um, since you can't really get the pump into the van like that, I just put this on the ground and fill it up at the gas station. And then I'm able to um, just pour it into the container where the heater actually draws the diesel from. And I've got, again, baby locks again, for the back storage here. And so I've got long storage here. I've got my fire extinguisher back here, my climbing helmet, climbing gear, um, extra fuel for my stove, hiking boots. I do have recovery boards back here. Um, I have had to use those more than once. I actually used them to help someone else out less than a week ago. Um, and then this side is actually normally, it's summer now, so I've actually offloaded my skis at a friend's house for the summer, but in the winter, my skis do actually fit in this cavity here and it actually goes into the sink cavity. I had to build a little box in that cabinet there in order for the ends of the skis to fit in there. But normally this side holds my skis and my boots and my helmet here. But right now it's just got my camping chairs um, and a camping table back there as well. I raised the floor in the back section to have more storage. So this is actually how I access the back kind of three quarters of that space there. So this actually has all of my um, backpacking gear in it. So I've got my backpacking backpack is in there. I've got a folding duffel bag here, um, Razor Creek backpacking chair, camp stove, hydration bladder, extra food storage, and just additional storage back here. So these are just my back covers for my back windows here. They just go on with magnets like that. Nice. Usually I do them from the inside there. Yeah. Those just help, um, especially with heat. It helps keep the heat out of the van and just block out at night and everything. And then I have just little curtains if I want, just during the day, just for a little bit of privacy, but still want to have some of that light filtering in. I can just use these curtains. I just love Bria's attention to detail and her can-do attitude. Thank you so much, Bria, for sharing your wonderful van. If you liked this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other information to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I appreciate your thoughtful comments. And if you're a woman who would like to join in deeper conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventures, and join our weekly Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey. <laughs>